exciting times people these citrus graphs have taken yes look at all that growth up there that is all graft growth those are newell's clementine graphs grafted onto this big sweet lemon tree and these graphs are starting to take and looking really really good here's another one there's the graft wrapped up with parafilm and look at all that growth popping out this is really really exciting news you want to know why i'm so excited about these citrus graphs it's because i did them in july that's our summer this is southern california zone 10 and we're here in the san gabriel valley this place is hot and it's dry the average temperatures around that time are between 90 and 100 degrees and it drops around between 65 and 75 at night it's not friendly conditions for most plants but citrus grafts seem to take even in the heat of the summer and that is exciting news to know because now i know i can graft citrus all seasons of the year okay uh this is a sweet lemon tree the lemons don't taste good they, to me they taste like water so i'm slowly starting to graft over different varieties of this tree i personally like mandarins so i'm grafting a lot of different mandarins onto this tree but if you want to get really creative and get crazy you can have lemon lime orange mandarin any kind of different citrus all in one tree it's a shocking sight to see different kinds of citrus growing on one tree you can impress your friends and your family and anyone who comes by your house they'll be mind blown seeing lemons and limes and oranges growing on one single tree and that is possible when it comes to citrus all right i'm holding in my hand a whole a piece of the kino mandarin now i got this from a special source I got this from the CCPP, Citrus Clonal Protection Program. It's a University of California program, and they sell clean budwood to anyone living in the United States. You can go to that site. They have a list of some of the most rare and amazing citrus in the uh, collection of citrus. They had varieties that I didn't even know existed. You can all find them there and get, get scions from them, and they have excellent scion wood, okay? Now, most people, when it comes to grafting, Citrus, they don't even graft citrus. They do something called tea budding, which in my opinion is much more difficult than doing just a classic cleft graft on the citrus, which works very, very well with grafting citrus. Today, I'll do a modified cleft graft, which also works very, very well with citrus, all right? Tea budding is more of a technique for like master gardeners that work in nurseries and they produce like hundreds of thousands of citrus trees for groves and these kind of things, all right? We'll focus on... Uh, We'll focus on the modified cleft graft today. I'll show you guys how I do it, okay? So let's get started. And another great thing about grafting citrus is the citrus trees tend to be really friendly in accepting a graft, meaning you don't have to do certain things to get a graft to take on citrus. You graft onto a, a stem, any stem of this, and it won't, the rootstock, which is the sweet lemon tree, won't, doesn't seem to overpower the grafts, which happens in other, when you're doing other grafts on other kinds of trees, for example, avocado. If you graft onto a large avocado tree, it, it wants to overpower the graft and it won't, uh, it's, hard get, it's hard to get a graft to take on it on a large avocado tree, but on a mature citrus tree, you can get a graft to take on it. And this little piece can take on this tree, all right? So I'll show you guys how it is. All right, folks, here's my scion. Look at the, and I'm gonna graft right here. I'm gonna graft onto this section right here. I'm gonna cut away this branch. I'm gonna cut it here and I'm gonna insert my scion right here. Look at the mismatch in size though. Here's the scion, it's much thinner than the rootstock that it's gonna get grafted onto. The rootstock is the tree that we're gonna graft onto. But I'm gonna do a special kind of graft that's gonna take care of that mismatch in size. It's called a modified cleft graft. And it'll, it'll, it'll adjust, it's an adjustment so we can match up the different sizes of, this, of the scion with the rootstock here, okay? So why did I choose this branch? Well, it's a good branch, strong, good grower, and here is, uh, right now, this is east facing. So the sun is setting over there in the west. This branch gets morning sun. It's protected from the strong western sun, even though that doesn't matter. But this section is not, doesn't have too many grafts on it. That's why I want to chose, I chose this area to do the graft here. All right, so first thing I'll do is I will cut right here. I cut that area off. I'm gonna cut off this little branch too, and this, and this. That little protrusion, and here's a nice flat surface 
to do some grafting onto, okay? All right, folks, now I got my utility knife. I got my trusted utility knife. I'll put the link in the description for this knife. You can find it online, very easy to find. I'm gonna come in, in the classic cleft graft, you would cut right down the middle, but we're not gonna do that kind of graft today. We're gonna do a modified one. So I'm gonna find the area between the middle and the end of the branch, and I'm gonna cut in between those two. And that's our modification. Now I'm gonna wiggle this knife so it can go through the wood and citrus wood right off the top of my beginning of cutting. It's really, really tough to cut through this wood. That's why uh, a modified cleft graft really helps too, because it's easier to cut through this section of the wood rather than the middle. All right, I'm going down about two inches here, between one and a half inch and two inches, and I'm wiggling the knife. It's, helps, it's helping me cut, and it's also keeping my knife in control. Okay, there we go. That's about two inches. And I'm going to take my knife out. That's our incision there. Okay. Folks, I got my grafting tape, parafilm grafting tape. Link will be in the description. You can find this tape easily online, okay? I'll put the link in the description below. You can find it. Now I'm going to wrap this scion. This is the piece of the Kino Mandarin again. I'm going to wrap it slowly and gently with control. I'm going to stretch this tape so it could, the tape could stick to itself. I'm stretching, I'm cutting. There we go, wrap it all up, except this part. This part is exposed because I'm gonna cut it and I'm gonna insert it right there into the rootstock there. Okay, here's my first cut. The first cut is long. This cut is long and it's two inches of cut to match the two inch cut that we made into the rootstock. Okay, that's the long side. Here's this, the other side. This is half the distance of cut that we're gonna do. And that's another modification. I'm cutting and cutting until I get an arrow shape at the tip. That's why I'm doing so many of these cuts. I'm keeping going. I didn't give. I haven't gotten my arrow shape yet. Almost there. There we go. I got my arrow shape. I'll show you what I'm talking about. There's my arrow shape. It has to have a sharp point, a sharp tip. See, long cut on one end, shorter cut on the other end, and that's it. Here we go. Here's our insertion. Just like that. Citrus wood is hard, so I'm forcing it in. And there it is. And I'm bringing it to the edge. I have it in the edge where the edge meets the edge of the branch. The scion's edge meets the rootstock's edge. Yep, that's a firm contact, so I don't have to move it again. Yeah, let me show you the side view. Let's try to get it in focus. There's the side view. Hopefully you can see that. There it is. Okay. I did that. Now all that's left now is more wrapping, more tape, and more wrapping. We'll do a few layers of tape here to really jam in the contact, force the contact here between the two. So what does this tape do? It creates a mini greenhouse keeps this scion alive while it's trying to fuse 
with the rest of the tree and become one with the rest of the tree. So I'm doing a few layers here to really reinforce this contact. And now I'll cover everything. I don't want anything exposed. And that's the finished graft. So I'll put a few layers of tape in that area where the scion met the rootstock because you really want firm contact, the scion to really, really touch the rootstock so they can fuse together and then grow together and become one. So that's why I did that, okay? And now we wait. It's gonna take about a month to see results. And then it, the beautiful thing is if the graft is successful, you'll see buds starting to blast through the tape. And that's how you know your graft is taken, like the ones I show you do in the beginning of the video, okay? By the way, the link to the CCPP, Citrus Colonial Protection Program, will be in the description of this video. You can find their website, you can create an account and order really good scions from them. All right, folks, as usual, thank you for watching. Leave me a comment, like, subscribe. Let me know how your citrus grafting is going. Thank you for watching, I appreciate all the support. Let's stay in touch and I have some uh, great videos coming up. All right, so hit the subscribe and always hit the like, all right? Thank you for watching, bye.